Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. And Condo Insider is a show for people who live and uh, work at condominiums. And uh, we try to address uh, issues and concerns uh, for all of our listeners. And today, our show is in response uh, to a request uh, to deal, we, we, uh, we, uh, uh, the speaker of the house, his name is Scott Psyche. He represents Kakako. He had a, a constituent call him and, and, and tell him that, um, there was a fire drill in her building. And, uh, apparently she's, uh, in her se late seventies or something. And she was going down the stairwell and she was, she was injured. And so, you know, it was a concern that she had about, you know, emergency evacuations. So, you know, today we're going to be talking about emergency evacuations. And I have with me, I'm proud to have with me on my show uh, from the fire department, Captain Christopher Abartolome. Hi, Captain. Hi, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Thank you for being uh, my guest on my show. And thank you for uh, uh, arranging on such short notice to answer all of these questions that we have. And, and I did uh, speak to uh, you guys about the situation. And, and, and uh, so, you know, one of the questions that we came up with is, you know, these fire drills that buildings have, is there something in the code that requires these fire drills? In the code, it, it, it says that, you know, you should at least hold one fire drill annually, uh, the frequency would lean towards conduct your drills until you become familiar with it or everyone knows what they're supposed to do. So it, it's also good for your residents to know what to do, but the drills, uh, mainly we wanna address the, the building staff. So they should know what to do in case there's an emergency as well because those are the people that the residents might be looking to for advice or looking to, oh, what do we do when there's a drill? So these drills are put in place so that the staff becomes familiar with it, as well as, you know, the residents should be, be familiar with it in case something does happen. Okay, you know, and I, 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 I you know, buildings, you know, have evacuation plans. Yes. So, you know, with this evacuation plans, do you recommend that they be in writing and maybe they circulate it to the owners and say, hey, this is when we do a fire drill. This is the way we're going to do it. And, and let, you know, let, let the owners kind of chime in and say, well, you know, you know, what, you know, you know, what if I, I can't make it down the steps? What if I broke my leg or what if I have mobility problems? I can't walk. Do I have to walk down the steps? I mean, how, how would you tell them how to set up their evacuation plans? So that, that's a good question, right? So every building should have an evacuation plan for their building. They should have one that is dispersed to all the residents in the building. You should give it out annually. When you have new residents moving into your building, you should give them a plan so at least they know what to do in case there's an emergency, right? Um, you don't want people moving into your building and living there. And if something happens, they don't know what to do. So we recommend at least every year you bring it up and you, you pass it out. Or if, if it's any changes to your plan, you need to disperse that to your residents so they know what to do. Okay, and I know that with first responders and especially, I mean, you guys are usually the first ones at the building in case of an emergency. There is a list of vulnerables, what they call vulnerable people. And the building is supposed to make up this list and put, and there's a box that first responders have a key to. So they, when they come to the building, they go to that box first thing to get this list, right? We call it the list of vulnerables and the building manager is supposed to be making this list up. What kind of information is on this list? So the list would consist of the people, like you said, who are vulnerable, who have mobility issues, or the non-ambulatory, that list should have their name, the unit number, at least so we know and we know where these people are. As far as keeping that list in the box, I think you're referring to the, uh, the box where we keep the elevator keys. Yes. Um, we don't recommend putting it in there. What we would say or recommend is each building should have an enunciator panel 
or your fire alarm panel. Uh, we'll usually go to that panel to check what zone or why was the alarm trip so we can find a location. So I, I tell people to make the list, keep it updated whenever people move out, move in, change units, put it in a binder along with all of your emergency information, contact names, building owners, and you put it by that enunciator panel and have it in a binder or a folder because we're going to go to that panel and then you keep another set of that with the building manager who has to go outside and meet the fire department so he can share that information with the captain or the chief so i would have two sets one by the enunciator panel and then one for the building manager or whoever is going to go outside and meet the fire department okay and how what when when you guys get this list what do you do with that information you know we that information is good because if, if suppose we have to get to that part of the building and we can see oh, who's in that section, will they need assistance, right? So at least we'll be aware if, if, the, if it's on that side of the building or this side of the building, you know, we'll be aware of it and take that into consideration when we're, we're planning out our tactics or planning out our plan of how to attack this emergency. Okay, well, let me go back to the code. Does the code require buildings to have fire drills? It's not required. It it's. I went back and was I was looking at the code, and it didn't come out straight and say, but we say at least annually you should do it. As far as because you want your staff to become familiar with the drill or with the plan, if. If no one's familiar with the plan, where you're comfortable doing it, if something goes down, who's, you know, how people are gonna know what to do, where to go, what path, what egress path to take. Um, as far as going to the drills, like you were concerned about where people have mobility issues. I know you guys were wondering, oh, what if this person has a hard time moving? What if they're bedridden? What if they're in a wheelchair? Right, that's my next question. Can yeah. they shelter in place? Yeah, so as far as drills go, as far as drills go, we want you to participate. But if you cannot, then don't. You would do shelter in place if that's what you can do in an emergency, if that's part of your emergency plan. Now, sheltering in place is a whole different um, set of tips and rules that you have to do, not just go back to your unit and stay there. There's things that you should do while you go back to your unit and shelter in place. So if, and what, if what are those requirements? What, what do you do when you go back to your unit? So what we would say, say you go back to your unit because you have to shelter in place because you have mobility issues, you're non-ambulatory, or even if you can move, you try to go out, you feel the door and the door is hot, the fire might be there. Or you try to go out to the stairwell and there's low visibility, there's heat, there's smoke. That kind of thing is also going to make you have to shelter in place. So you go back into your unit and you're going to shelter in place. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to put a wet towel or tape around your door to block the smoke from coming into the space underneath or around the door because you don't want smoke coming into your unit. Once smoke gets in your unit, it becomes uninhabitable and you're going to be stuck in the same situation as if you went into the smoky uh, hallway. So you're going to block the spaces around the door with a, a wet towel or a blanket, or if you have duct tape, you tape around the door to seal the space. You're also going to do that with if you have um, air conditioning vents, you're gonna take cover that up because you don't want smoke coming in that way either, right? And then you close all your windows and doors because what if uh, smoke comes out from the outside and starts coming in from the outside in, into your unit, now you have smoke coming in that way. So you have to, you're sealing yourself in so smoke doesn't get in there. You wanna keep your space sterile, right? So once you do that, then you can get uh, go on your cell phone or your phone and you call 911 and you say, I'm at this building that uh, has a fire. Um, I have to shelter in place. 
I'm in unit, for example, unit 501. So at least we know that, oh, there's someone in unit 501 that's sheltering in place as well, right? Um, if it's at night, you can shine flashlights through the window going to the outside. So then we'll see from the outside. Um, or you can wave a uh, brightly colored towel or blanket through the window. So uh, hopefully we'll see you waving that through the window from the outside. So those are all the things that you should do when you shelter in place, not just go in and close your door and, and wait. So you have to do some stuff to keep your, keep your unit smoke free so you can stay there until we can come and get you. So, so going out to the lanai is not a safe thing to do when you're sheltering in place? No, I would stay inside and you and you close up. Okay. And um, you know, getting back to you know the the escape routes, you know, some buildings actually have like a floor plan. They have like a map mm -hmm. on every floor that has arrows and it says you are right. here, right? And it tells you where to go. Do you Correct. recommend that buildings put that up in their buildings on each floor? So in addition to the, the uh, emergency plan that you give to all your residents annually, if it's updated, or when, it's, when residents move in and you give them the emergency packets so they have the map in there. In addition to that, you can post your evacuation plan that has all your egress routes, the stairwells. Um, you can put on that map where you have fire extinguishers you can put in that map where they have pull stations. I would put that where everyone sees it. So maybe like in all the elevator banks, because when they're waiting for the elevator, they can at least take a look at it, you know, or you can put it by the, the entrance to your stairwell or down in the entrance and by the lobby, just somewhere where people congregate for a while and then they can see it. But they should be given that plan if they don't have one, update it annually if you have to and then pass out the new plan, just so they have it in with them in their unit, right? Captain, you know, in my building, we have two stairwells and one is enclosed and the other one is, you know, it's open to the air. What if we tell the, you know, people, if you have, ambulatory problems or you you know you, you you broke a leg or you can't make it down the steps for some reason you get to the to the stairwell that's open to the air and and wait there for for somebody to come rescue you would that be a good thing to tell them if you if you're gonna if you can make it to the stairwell if you go to the one that's open that's it remember my i told about sheltering in place and smoke will come around or come up and so you're still, if you're going to wait there, you still might be in smoke in the open air one. If you're going to wait at the stairwell landing, I think you should go to the one that's enclosed because that's designed for safe egress. Okay, so they should go to the enclosed stairwell. Yeah, because it's the same reason if you left your windows and doors open to your unit and then somehow smoke got in that way, now you're still in the same situation. Okay. What, what about, you know, in, in when, when a building sets up their um, um, emergency evacuation, what about if they set up like a fire committee or a safety committee and set up maybe floor captains? Would you suggest something like that? So you have somebody who's responsible for tenants on certain floors? If you have the manpower, if you have the training, that's always good that you have someone there that knows what to do just in case the residents didn't take a look at the plan or they don't know what to do it's always good to have that but if you're going to have that you got to make sure that they know what to do so that's why you would do your annual training and or even if you do more than once a year to get familiar with the plan or become proficient in it and you should do it second nature if you're not going to have that then if you have those floor captains or you call them floor wardens they might be in trouble as well if they don't know what they're doing. But if you can train them um, yearly, uh, you have a fire drill yearly, and then you have a tabletop exercise in addition to that, where they can talk it over and become familiar with the plan, then 
that's always good. Like in the high rise buildings that uh, have business in them, they have floor wardens to clear out uh, the business or that floor. But we go to those businesses and we hold floor warden training and we go over it and we tell them, okay, this is what you have to do. So, so, so do you have do you have programs for residential buildings? Does the fire department will they come out and talk to the building and the residents? Yeah, so we before COVID hit, one of our jobs or one of our duties was our office did in-person presentations on fire and life safety. And we used to go out to different buildings after hours because that's when the residents are home from work, right? So the different boards or the different AOAOs would call us when they had their meeting and we'd come in and do a presentation before they did their regular meeting. So we were more than happy to come out and talk to your residents. We do a little PowerPoint presentation and we try to answer questions. So we, we, we will come out and do that. Can you give us a phone number right now where people can call if they want to uh, set up a meeting or have your people come out and address their residents? Can you give us a phone number? Later, later on, um, they're gonna post our website. It's fire.honolulu.gov. And if you go to our website, there's all the information there where you okay, can- Okay, the website is being scrolled right now. So the, the listeners, one. if you want a phone number for the fire department to come and talk to your residents, go to that website fire.honolulu.gov yes just and the call. phone number is there right it's also yeah you can call but there's also a tab to request that presentation okay so you just follow the request tab and you choose what you want to have us come talk to you about because we also do career days we also do fire extinguisher training as well as a fire and life safety training Okay, so other than, you know, um, having uh, these, you know, uh, fire captains, I mean, uh, uh, floor captains and, and, you know, maybe a safety committee, uh, what other ways can buildings educate their residents so that they'll be able to evacuate a building in an emergency? So it's all going to come down to knowing what you have to do, right? Maybe you guys can have, if we don't come by, you guys can just make sure you guys talk to your residents maybe once a month, a little short safety at the beginning of your meeting and you go over that plan. We also have tip sheets, but we have a website you can go to and get tip sheets and print it out and you can put it up every month, a different one every month, right? It goes into fire safety and prevention. If you can make everybody safe and prevent fires, then you wouldn't have to worry about that evacuation part so much. So we like to go and do prevention first, and then we'll go into the evacuation because it's it's better to just have not have a fire. Period. Right. Mm -hmm. So every month you can put up a different tip tip sheet for different topics. Like a, in December we have a a Christmas one uh, for Halloween. There's also and one so they can get this on the website, and so they. Can <clears throat> they can download the, the information and post it on their bulletin board. Yeah, so every month you can put a different one. There's, there's more than 12, so you can change it out every month. Depending what you want to put, there's one for, uh, I think I sent you uh, two attachments, one for high rise and one for uh, apartment buildings. You could start mm -hmm. with that. So every month you can put a new one on. If you go to our website, um, you should find the links there. And if not, you just email me or there's a number on there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you have your, your board, contact us. Like I said, we'd be more than happy to come out. Right now, if we can't come out in person, we're more than happy to do a Zoom presentation. It's pretty accessible. You just got to want to have us come out and do it. Okay, you know, and I have some questions. I, I told you that I had some questions from somebody who's listening to this show. So since he's listening, I better ask the questions. Oh, yeah. If someone is physically impaired or unable to walk down the stairs, and this is during a fire drill, can they use the elevator? Even though it's not a fire, it's a fire drill. Should Can they use the elevator? So the thing about that, if you're going to use that, people are going to do, if it was a real thing, they think they're going to be able to use the elevator. 
If you cannot move, just shelter in place. We don't want or go, to, or go to one of the uh, go to the covered stairwell, right? Yeah, we don't want you going to the elevator because you're not going to use the elevator. I don't want people thinking to use the elevator during drills and then something real happens and they're still in that mindset. Oh, I always use the elevator, but it's not going to be available and it's not recommended. So if you cannot during a drill because of your mobility issues, you should shelter in place, but you should know what to do when you shelter in place. Okay, and or go into the uh, the covered stairwell. Yes, if you if you can make it to the, the enclosed stairwell, and just wait there or slowly go down. Because once you're in there, you should be safe. So you can at your leisure or at uh, well at the speed you're you're available to do it to. Then you can go down down the stairs slowly. Okay, and 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 one of the questions was that you know and they would stay in the stairwell until they got the all clear system. So that means that the, the building managers, I guess this is something that if the building managers or property managers or board members are listening to this show, they gotta know is that if they set up a fire drill and one of the things, options that they give their residents, if you can't make it down a stairwell, no, don't use the elevator, shelter in place or go to a covered stairwell and go as far down as you can, but you know, just as, as, long, as much as you can, how are they gonna, they have to also tell the people when the all clear is, and usually condominiums don't have a signal. So that means that they're gonna have to send the security or other staff members, you know, to uh, either knock on doors, or if they have an email, a blast email for owners to check their email, or check the stairwell, right? To see if people are sheltering because it's not like you have uh, a, a, an audio system that goes throughout the building to say, okay, all clear, or you know, a signal that says all clear, right? So in that case, if you are gonna to go to the coverage stairwell, um, there will be people walking down and the people walking down should Acknowledge that they're there and they're going down slowly and try to get their name and remember where you saw that person. So if you're passing someone that's having trouble, but they're taking their time going down slowly, you can get their name. And when you get to the bottom, you can say, uh, by the way, Mrs. So-and-so, we passed her and she's taking her time, but we saw her last on floor seven. But she's okay. taking her time. That's so something for building help. managers who are watching the show to incorporate into their evacuation plan is they got to they got to give instructions to people who are walking down the stairwell to tell the management when they get to the bottom that somebody else is in the stairwell they got to check the stairwell you know in addition to one of the presentations we do we also do uh it's called fire evacuation planning assist so oh. if you have a plan already or you wanted to update it or you wanted you know to go over it We'll come out and meet with two or three of your guys or your, your staff, and we'll kind of see what you need or what areas you can improve on or what area is good. So that's also one of the choices on the requests that, you know, we'll come out and help you work on your evacuation plan, but you should have something in place already that we can build off of. Okay, well, that's good to know. That's, that's really good to know because I'm sure a lot of these buildings have maybe a, a skeleton plan, but you know that would be really good to know that they can call the fire department to get assistance in fine tuning their evacuation plan. Yeah, with go, the to fire the department. Website, go to the website and request that. So okay. you're, not gonna, you're not gonna call the fire stations that's in your area. You're gonna call, I'm from the community relations office in education. So we, we go out, and we do these educational presentations because we want the community to be safe and not get to that point where you have to call the fire department. Okay, and this is the last question. Can the parking deck doors be opened during the fire drill so that the elderly can be taken down to the ground floor by a vehicle? I saw that question and that one is a little tricky. Like we have to come out and see it, right? Because in an evacuation, there'll be a lot of people walking. And I don't know where that egress path that they had planned. Is it crossing dry? Is it crossing the parking lot? And if you have cars moving and people walking, I don't want to have an accident of someone getting hit. 
So during a drill, you know, if you're an, an, an elderly person that has, again, a hard time moving, don't just go down slowly. Don't have to go all the way down to the ground floor because if you start having moving, a lot of moving parts, I don't want people to get hit. Like I said, you got to come out and see your plan and see what the situation is. I can't make a blanket statement about that one. I want to come out and see what it is before I say, okay, you can do that, right? And then cause more trouble. Right. Uh, and, you know, and, and, you know, I guess, you know, the, the good part of this show is besides the fact that you've answered all these questions as you've given the buildings a resource. So they, now they can call the fire department. You will come out help them fine tune and evacuate an emergency evacuation plan. You will come out and address the residents and talk to them about what they can do. And, and what I, I think I hear from you is that everybody's gotta have a plan. If you don't have a plan now, you have to have a plan. And especially, I think most buildings know about the list of vulnerables. And so I think, you know, but you've given us some additional information. Uh, today was the first time I heard about the, the two binders and you know, to, and 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 to have one ready with the site manager and the other one, uh, uh, where did you say it should be by the? You should put it where it's easily seen by the enunciator panel. Your enunciator panel. panel. Okay. Yeah. All right. And 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 we've kind of run out of time, so I thank you very much, Captain, for being my guest on the show. And um, and we've. Uh, this is a YouTube show, so you know it, it's going to be available for people to watch over and over again if they want to, and so uh, hopefully they will, and they will, you know, uh, use this information that you've provided them, uh, so that they will be safe in their homes. And thank you so much uh, for being uh, with us. And on behalf of the Speaker of the House, let me tell you, he's very grateful to the Fire Department for coming at such short notice to help his constituents with a, a, with a concern that they had. Thank yeah, you very no, much, Captain. No problem. Thank you for having us. Uh, you guys have a great day. We just want everyone to be safe. Okay, and thank you uh, for all of you for joining us for this Condo Insider uh, show. And please join us next week uh, where Richard Emery will be your host for another episode of Condo Insider. Mahalo and aloha.